Om Ajnanti Miranhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaurabhakta Vrinda Today we are going to study Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2, verse number 11. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Ashochyam nana shochastvam Pragnavadams chabhashase Gatasunagatasumscha Nanushochanti Panditaha Translation The Blessed Lord said, While speaking learned words, you are mourning for what is not worthy of grief. Those who are wise lament neither for the living nor the dead. This is a, one of the first very important spiritual instructions that Krishna gives to Arjuna. Arjuna comes into this battlefield and sees that the opposing army is composed of all family members, superiors, all kinds of relatives. And uh, he's bewildered because he's a fighter and he's going into this world war. And uh, then suddenly all the enemies are his relatives. So he becomes very morose and he he throws his weapons through the floor and he, he becomes bewildered and he's lamenting and he's like, I'm not going to fight, I'll, uh, I better become a beggar. <laughs> so uh, after he does that, he says to Krishna, who is his charioteer, he tells uh, Krishna, I am very confused, uh, please tell me what to do, I am a soul surrender unto you, he says. and then. Krishna replies by smiling in the middle of this battlefield, he smiles, and then he says this verse. The Blessed Lord said, While speaking learned words, you are mourning for what is not worthy of grief. Those who are wise lament neither for the living nor the dead. So, he gives this very important instruction, which is the core of spiritual life. To understand what is the difference between something material and something spiritual. And he clearly points out that uh, the soul is what is the eternal part of the living entity. And the body, which uh, appears at some point in time and it will disappear at some other point in time, is temporary. And this distinction is very, very crucial because uh, if we understand that, uh, in this case Arjuna, if he understands that he's going not to kill his family members and teachers and all this, but he's actually performing uh, his duty, which is to protect the citizens, to protect the world from criminals. And uh, they are on the opposing army, they were very avaricious, they wanted to take the kingdom by stealing in an illicit way. So he had his, his right to fight. And Krishna is telling him, you know, you're lamenting because you think they are your family. But you don't understand that if you are actually wise, this body that you see, that uh, you consider this your relative, is only temporary. In a hundred years from now, or a thousand years from now, whoever you call your uncle or mother or father or children or wife, they are not going to be the same. Their body is going to change. So it is very important for a spiritual person to understand that the relationships in this world, they are they're temporary if they are based in this bodily platform. Just because my body resembles that of my father for a hundred years, then I say, oh, father, father. But what happens after a hundred years? then it's no longer father. So it's the same thing. When we act in this world, 
we should not consider the body as as the cause of action but the soul for example if we want to really help someone we don't spiritually we don't consider that oh if you're my father i'll help you more or if you're my brother i'll help you more as when we give spiritual knowledge we're not discriminating by bodily relationship we give these lectures to anyone who hears to anyone who is uh, capable of listening and interested it's not uh, a bodily thing like if i have money then i usually will only spend it with my family and it's mine and me and my close relatives and that's it but uh, that is uh, very limited Spiritual knowledge means that we share and if one has wisdom, we should share that wisdom with others. This is the, the spiritual understanding and not act in this world just because of some bodily relationship. And so Arjuna, uh, being all bewildered, uh, I'm going to kill my family, uh, asks Krishna and Krishna says, okay, well, the first thing you need to understand is well, the soul is eternal. It's not the body that matters. So when you do your duty, when you actually want to help someone, when you want to protect, in this case, he wanted to protect the, the kingdom from being stolen in an illicit way. So his duty as a fighter, as a kshatriya is called in the Vedic way, his duty was to, to kill those miscreants because they were breaking all the protocols of the kingdom so regardless if they're my mother father cousin or whatever one should be uh, always protecting the benefit of the soul in this world and that is why, why the vedic way is so special because the 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 whole way that the society is arranged is so that all different levels and degrees of uh, persons make progress gradually someone who's really fallen will make some progress to the next level and the same with someone who's very elevated will make also progress it's not like when we see in society today that there's a few people who are very rich and then everyone else is poor and then they will get more and more poor and the rich will get more and more rich this is material society but uh, spiritual spiritual man will will not want that spiritual society will aim for an arrangement in which every part of the society goes together and goes upward elevates that's the vedic way so arjuna had the duty to fight because uh, otherwise the whole society would have become degraded being taken over by uh, uh what's the word um, taken over by persons who are not qualified to rule, who are stealing the kingdom. And then Krishna says in the next verse, Never was there a time when I did not exist, nor you, nor all these kings, nor in the future shall any of us cease to be. And then he, he proceeds to, to explain the qualities of the soul and how the soul cannot be burnt or moistened and things like that to make the the point very very clear and well uh, for for most persons in this world the uh, the body is so so much a, a, an identification that if uh, the body has a problem then i feel that my life is useless but we should understand that the body is just a machine what matters is the soul and how can I attain a body that's eternal, that doesn't have to get birth and death and all these things that are in, uh, happening in this world. So uh, this is core fundamental spiritual truth. The soul is eternal. And you really need to think about it very deeply because just by understanding this one truth, your life, completely changed just by this one because there's so many implications of this okay so if the soul is eternal then then that means this the life doesn't end when the body is gone that means i'm going to go somewhere and that means i'm gonna get another body 
and I have a choice. I can choose an, another material body or a spiritual body, but there is a future. It's not that life ends and then I just see nothing or it's all white and I never remember anything. No, the spiritual life means that the soul is eternal and I must choose something that I can do eternally that will make me happy. So it changes the, the whole approach to life. Uh, most people think, well, the body, when I die, then that's it, finished. So then I should enjoy as much as I can. <laughs> but they don't understand that the actual truth means that the soul is eternal. So we should work so that at the end of this life we get a, a much better condition in the next life. Especially try to uh, avoid this birth, death, old age disease. We don't need this again. We can get out of this trap, out of this material world. As uh, Prabhupada would say, go back home, back to Godhead. Another very important element you should consider is that, oh, well, if I have a soul and I'm in this material body, what about plants and animals? Well, then they're also spirit souls and they're in a different kind of body. So our approach to how we treat animals, how we treat plants and other living entities changes completely, radically, just because we understand this simple truth, the spiritual truth, that the soul is eternal. And anything that's living is uh, a soul. Whatever is not moving as inert, that's material, that is not conscious. But whatever is conscious means there's a soul in there. And, and, and this simple truth starts to trigger so many other conclusions that uh, if, you, if you really think about it and you dig deep in many religions or in all bona fide religions, this, uh, this fact of the soul being eternal is actually stated, but actually, the funny thing is very few people even recognize it or, or take it in as a spiritual truth. And Krishna is very kind because the first thing he says is the soul is eternal. So don't lament, don't lament. Do your duty. If you have any comments or questions, please visit our website, thevedicway.org. Thank you. Hare Krishna.